Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos and welcome to this uh, Mythic Restless Cabal video. Uh, this is a rogue perspective, although I've since killed this on a shaman also. Um, so this boss fight is really cool. There's a, there's a lot going on in this fight. That's awesome. There's two targets uh, that you're going to need to kill uh, within 15 seconds of each other at the end of the fight. But for actually for much of the fight, you can do asymmetric damage based on what your goals are, because at every 25% of their life totals, uh, they'll do a, a thing and your strategy re revolves around that. We'll get to that when we get to it, though. First off is this buff that you can get. Um, basically, what you saw there is I ran out and I stood on that Dark Herald person. Uh, one range person will get targeted with that Dark Herald and a little circle around them. And then anybody who goes and stands in that will get this Promises of Power buff. Uh, and that starts stacking up on you. And what that buff does is it increases your damage and healing done per stack, but it also reduces your maximum health. So when you have nine stacks, which is the maximum amount of stacks of that, you only have 10% uh, of your base health. If you look at my health now, uh, just 26k, very, very fragile. Uh, I'll die to pretty much any damage instance, um, but I'm doing way more damage. And you see here, I'm popping my Vendetta, just blasting huge damage. And this is actually the reason that if, if you look at my Azerite traits up in the top left, I'm playing three Shrouded and a Nothing Personal is because those uh, traits all do damage during your like cooldowns. Uh, and the strategy I, t I took on this fight uh, was to basically always have Promises of Power during my cooldowns. Here we have some damage coming out, uh, and I ended up using my Cloak of Shadows there to remove my stacks of Promises of Power. Uh, because I was worried that I wasn't going to get a powered shield in time, which is what I was going to need to survive that that um, that burst of damage. Basically, we have, our strategy is, okay, uh, there's a burst of damage that comes out at a minute and 20 seconds in this fight, and that's the one where we want people to actually be able to keep their 9 stack. So we use Barrier, uh, Spirit Link Totem, that kind of stuff, those d damage reduction effects, plus Rapture Shields from our Disc Priest um, to keep people alive during that. But... I, we, only, we only actually have one Disc Priest here, one of our, one of our Priests is playing Holy, so uh, I didn't get a, bear, a shield until just before the end, and I had already cloaked because I was worried I was about to die. Because um, if you'll notice, I'm not playing Cheat Death here, I'm playing uh, Elusiveness instead, because Elusiveness actually reduces the damage of a bunch of effects on this fight that Cheat Death, or that otherwise Faint doesn't work on. Most most of the damage in this fight, it's really annoying, actually doesn't get reduced by Faint. Um, like that <laughs> that explosion of damage right there from, those, from that little ad dying, um, the Crashing Doubt damage, I guess I should explain those mechanics real quick. So Crashing Doubts, basically they go out uh, every, you know, so often. Um, there'll be Crashing Doubts, and that'll affect two people. It's a pretty serious dot, so those people will need to have their Promises of Powers dispelled immediately. Um, and then it'll explode after like nine, nine, ten seconds. Uh, a, little, a little more. It, it depends on whether you're a troll or not, actually. So it's, it's by default, it's a 12 second uh, dot, but it's less long if you're a troll because it also comes with a slow, <laughs> and trolls have slows for less long. So our 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 guild being a horde guild, sometimes they're desynced a little bit. Uh, but there you go. You saw I had that little weak aura tracking the the two crashing doubts. They explode on everybody, uh, and basically that's a, a time where you need to evaluate whether you have promises of power, and if you do, you need to either have defensives uh, to survive it because you're very low on health, uh, or you need to get yourself dispelled. And again, you can see I'm tracking my promises of power. I'm taking this promises of power right now because it's going to line up with my second vendetta. Uh, and if you, at the end of this fight, I basically, I had promises fully stacked for all of my vendettas, and I never had promises outside of my vendetta. Uh, and that lined up perfectly with Cloak of Shadows as well. It meant that at any time if I was about to die, uh, I could use my Cloak of Shadows to remove my promises stack, because I never had uh, promises except when my Cloak was available. And this is important for us based on our composition that we had to kill this boss, um, because of the fact that we didn't actually have as many dispels on our, on our roster as we would have liked here. The meta composition to kill this boss uh, was full of like warlocks, shadow priests that can dispel themselves. But if you look at our comp, we have uh, an extra demon hunter. We have like a, a death knight. We were, I think we were the second guild in the world to kill this with a death knight. Um, we have a couple. We have a moonkin. Um, so we didn't actually have as many dispels to go around as we would have liked, and that's why I, I wanted to play this role of not actually requiring an external dispel and just having my cloak of shadows available uh, if I couldn't get a dispel. Now, if you see here, there's some ads out there. Let me explain right now how the ads get spawned and what the bosses themselves do. Um, basically, there are three relics around the room, and every time a boss hits 25%, has a, hits a 25% interval, uh, that boss will empower the nearest relic to them. Uh, each relic does something different when it's empowered, and also each boss does something whenever it empowers any relic. Uh, so Fothel the Feared here is the one that makes these ads, these Eldritch Abominations. Eldritch Abominations need to be interrupted. Um, basically, they have a cast. When the cast goes off, they will die and they'll do a bunch of damage to the raid, and then if two casts go off within eight seconds of each other, uh, it's gonna be a wipe because they, they stack more damage. So you need to stagger interrupts on those on those adds. Uh, we have a weak aura, or not a weak aura actually, we have a, 
Big Wigs does this, DBM I think does it too, where it just auto marks the three ads and then we have an assignment. So uh, like person, a certain person is kicking the first triangle and then the second triangle, and we actually have a spreadsheet where it's all, all mapped out. Uh, I'm not actually assigned to any kicks here, but I, I have a backup kick where if there's a kick that's about to get missed, uh, I, I get that one. And there's also some situations where we kick more times than we might need to, to prevent the damage from happening. Like if people are low, we'll keep kicking them for longer and not let any of them cast until people will not die to it anymore. Um, so that's what Fothel does when he empowers a relic. Zaxaj, when Zaxaj empowers a relic, makes that terrifying echo caster, the visage from beyond. You can see it at the bottom of my screen right now. Uh, and that ad, basically it'll, it'll channel this terrifying echo and it needs to be killed to stop channeling it. And then when it's killed, it will slowly regenerate health uh, until it starts casting again. Uh, every time it gets to full health, it casts. Every time it gets to zero health, it stops casting. Uh, and that's the way that that one works. So uh, that's the way. That's what the two bosses do every time they empower a relic. Let's talk about the three relics. This is the one that we empower last here that we're just walking to, this Tempest Caller. Uh, this one is really toxic, actually. It's, it's, so, it's so brutal. When it gets activated, there's this uh, storm that goes on right now that uh, does damage to everybody. And if anybody is below 25% health, it just one-shots them. It, it, it kills you immediately if a damage instance goes out and you're below 25% health. So we use a bunch of cooldowns on this. Another effect that this has is it reduces your damage done by 50% as long as it's active. Uh, so that is just super, super brutal. Uh, and this, this because of that 25% execute thing and the huge rate damage, this is often a time where we'll kick the Eldritch Abominations for longer than we otherwise would. Uh, like you'll see there, I have this weak aura that's popped up uh, with number five glowing. That's my kick on triangle. I don't normally need to get it. The fifth kick on triangle, that one normally just gets to go through. Uh, but in this particular case, we wanted to do one extra kick uh, just so that we would be we'd be safe there. Uh, okay, so that's what the storm does when empowered. You see these little balls on the ground, the um, the ocean-y ball things? That's what the other one of the other relics does, the one we activate first, the trident of the deep waters or whatever. I don't know. I don't actually know what it's called, uh, but the trident. When that one's activated, uh, for the rest of the fight, there will be these balls around, and they'll stun you if you run into them. You will saw you saw actually earlier in the fight, I used my Cloak of Shadows to... Uh, both remove a Promises of Power for myself, and then I ran through some balls to soak them because that removes them from the ground. Um, you can also use a Drainic Action Potion, and that will be something you can use if you accidentally get stunned by one of those balls, and it'll break you out of the stun. Very, very powerful. Um, so here, this Visage from Beyond, this one that's getting activated right now during the Storm phase, because it's during the Storm, nobody has Promises of Power, right? So nobody's doing extra damage, and everybody's doing half damage. So it's actually not possible to kill that Visage. So our plan is just to let it go off. It does a burst of damage to everybody, and it fears everybody. Uh, but we just drop our, our Tremor Totem for that, uh, and everything is A-OK. -okay. Uh, so that's our that's our strat for that Visage, and then we're not going to let any other Visage casts go off. Um, and then one thing also about the Trident Relic that I didn't mention is that when it gets activated, you need to make sure the bosses are in it. And you need to DPS them because otherwise you'll you'll wipe the raid. It puts out this little shield on the on everything close to it, and you need to DPS through that shield. Otherwise, it will explode and kill everybody. Uh, so that's an important thing about the trident. The final relic that I didn't really get the chance to mention is the um, the void one. When that one gets activated, the boss that activates it gets a shield, and for as long as that shield persists, no healing can be done to anybody. So that needs to get broken pretty quickly. And then for the rest of the fight, the void relic will suck people in. Uh, and as you can see right now, we're getting sucked in. Um, towards that toward that Void Relic. And then the final thing that a Relic does that I forgot to mention is the Storm Relic. Once it's been activated for the rest of this fight, it'll make these Storm Balls. You can see one at the top of my screen right now, actually, right now. Uh, and that will zap people and stack a damage taken increase on them. Um, so you need to have that have different people be the closest to them because that's the person who gets zapped by those Storm Balls. And it will do the Annihilate thing as well, where if you're below 25%, it just one-shots you. Uh, so that's bad. Anyways, we're, we're pretty much through this fight now. We, we ended up killing this boss. You'll notice that the, my bigwigs actually said they berserked. That's because bigwigs is, has the old berserk timer. This boss was released with an 8 minute 30 second berserk, uh, and it now has a 9 minute 30 second berserk. We killed this boss uh, the first day after that change. This was the second week that this instance was out, uh, week two. So uh, eight, day, eight days after this dungeon launched, we, we killed this boss, uh, but they did they had nerfed that effect by then. Uh, anyways, this is, this is our, our kill of the boss. Uh, the boss eventually goes down here with nine minutes and 15 seconds uh, on, our, on our kill time, a little bit longer than that, I guess. Um, <laughs> I was pretty happy about it. Uh, and that's our, our Mythic Restless Cabal video. <laughs> you can see chat's going a little, a little crazy too. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I will see you in the next one.